Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about Walksnail. Now, last time I did a poll, 60% of the audience was analog only, with lots of that audience looking to move to HD at some point in the future. And over winter, I got quite a few messages from analog pilots who were looking to make the move in spring. So, kind of about now. The big question is, is it worth it going from a nice analog setup to something like Walksnail? And the problem is, is that that's really difficult for me to answer. That's a very personal choice. The other thing that makes it very difficult is lots of the content creators here on places like YouTube and other places have been flying HD for quite a long time. And I've kind of forgot what it's like to just be flying in 640 by 480 pixels, even with really nice equipment in analog. So to answer those questions that I've been getting over winter, over the last couple of months as well, I thought, you know what? I have an answer for this. This is Adam, one of my flying buddies. Now, Adam's been flying analog for quite a few years, and one of the recent flights that we had, I had the Walksnail kit with me, and it was an opportunity for him to try the goggles out. But actually, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to get a genuine, honest opinion of what it is like to go up to a HD system like Walksnail when you're an analog pilot. And then to ask the killer question, is it worth it? So this is Adam. Adam, thank you so much for the time this morning. Now, Adam, three weeks ago, uh, was first introduced to the Walksnail system through that experience when I took my Walksnail stuff to the field, and he had a go. Before that, it was analog only. What kind of stuff were you flying with analog, and what goggles did you have? Quite a few planes, actually. Um, so I've got a Ranger, uh, the He-Wing Ranger, the He-Wing uh, Ripper as well. Uh, I've got a lot of ZOHD aircraft as well. Um, so many, many planes. You know, it's like you start off with one or two and you end up with, with ten. And it was all analog. You know, it was my way into uh, into FPV. The, the goggles I had were the uh, uh, the Scout, the Fat Shark Scout goggles. And um, I really liked that kind of the box uh, goggle design. That's what I've been used to before. I started off with a very, very cheap pair of uh, box goggles. And, and then I moved on to the, the scout goggles. Um, but yeah, you know, I've been I was very happy with that uh, that setup, and that's what uh, you know got me into the hobby. We've talked a lot about HD systems because I've been over and we've flown, and you've had to go with the GGI stuff, you've had to go with the Walksnail stuff, uh, and the Walksnail stuff was probably two or three weeks ago, I think it was, when I was over, and and you had that go. You tried both the HDO2s with the VRX module and the Avatar unit. And um, the conversation that we had at the field on that day was very much that the, not to put words in your mouth, but to kind of keep this segment relatively short, the image was kind of the same in both, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. Um, it was quite hard for me, not being an expert in the field, to notice any difference between the, between the two. Very nice images so it's uh... we were testing both of those uh, again that link is down below to the different testing with the vrx units and different goggles we were flying at 720p so adam wouldn't have really seen that difference because 720p is displayed natively in the hdl2s so the goggles that you've been flying with those scouts don't have a hdmi input so that means that for you the vrx module wasn't an option in, no exactly you know, yeah, yeah. What, what, which is a shame because it would have been an easy upgrade. It make. would have been lovely because actually you really like those goggles and there's yeah. lots of room on that big fat set of goggles because it's that box style that you could have, you know, Velcroed on uh, a VRX system. If, however, your goggles had been capable of having the VRX unit plugged in, if you think about the difference between the, the view in those goggles in analog and again, you've got some really nice analog kit. You fly good cameras, good VTXs. You know, it's not the cheap and cheerful Ishin stuff. You know, you're flying um, Runcam, Cadix, TBS, right? Exactly. If you think about that really nice analog image that you've crafted over the last three or four years, what kind of difference was there? And would that be worth the £200 for a VRX module? I mean, absolutely. It's, it's just... Okay. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's until you've experienced it and you've seen the difference between the two, you can't appreciate how how good it's going to be. But once I've seen it, if I had goggles that I could pay two hundred pounds to upgrade to to make it to HD, 
definitely it would be a very good uh, investment. Okay, that's a that's a pretty resounding yes. That's good to know. So, so for those of you out there that do have HDOs or HDO twos, um, it is a relatively inexpensive option to go up there. Uh, don't forget, there's also the Recon HDs, which are available now, which are only eighty pounds more. Uh, they are that box style goggle, and I know we talked about that as an option for you because that wasn't that HD input uh, for the goggles that you had. However, we we flew a lot when I was with you with the Avatar goggles, which are 500, 550 pounds. So significantly more expensive than a 200 pound module or a 280 pound set of Recon HDs from Fat Shark. What was that experience like? Because you spent a lot more time in there and you were flying with iNav6, with the on-screen display turned on. I think it was 720p that you were doing most of the flying with. How how was that experience? Yeah, it's lovely. They, they fitted me very well. It's a, it's a nice compact design. Um, they, um, I think they look very stylish as well. I think I kind of like the look of them as well. Um, I just thought it was very, for someone who's never used the system before, I thought it was very easy to use. The menu is very straightforward. You know, it's as close for me as like a plug and play kind of system as it, as it could be. I that's, just found it very easy to use. That's interesting because I know one of the things that we talked about was that. Uh, you wanted it to be very similar to the analog stuff. You didn't want lots of computers and USB cables and stuff. You yeah. just want you just want it to work. And also, those goggles are five hundred and fifty pounds, right? Compared to the two hundred and two hundred and eighty, is it worth it to go to those goggles? Because you haven't flown binocular goggles a lot historically, right? no. And, and, and you need sight correction too, don't you? So, so, yeah. so. Yeah. How's all that worked for you? Well, that, that's always been a concern of mine because you know you, you 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 pay a lot of money out for these goggles, and that's the first time you ever get a chance to actually experience them. And I've and the, the box goggles have always worked with me; they've always been a, a good picture. It's always worked in my sight correction; it's been okay. So it's something that I was always kind of worried about. But then trying the Avatar goggles, I've been absolutely fine. I've been able to adjust them perfectly to to get a good visit a uh, good uh, image because you didn't if i remember rightly you didn't have eye strain or any of that stuff when you flew them they seem to be pretty pretty nice and you, you did mention that the field of view looked similar to what you had in your analog goggles which is one of the, yeah. one of the nice things about the analog goggles you had they had a the screen looked huge yeah definitely once you've got it adjusted and you've got it set up for you know your pupil distance etc and stuff it just it just looks like one big screen and what I'm used to from my box goggles. Do you mind sharing what your prescription is for your uh, glasses, just so people watching can know? Yeah, so I have uh, plus 5.5 in both my eyes, but the, the goggles won't correct for that, so I have to wear contact lenses anyway. Right. Uh, so really all I'm correcting for is just um, our pupil distance. So I have the goggles just set up at zero, and I just correct for the pupil distance, but it works absolutely fine. You can tweak them a little bit just to make sure they're perfect image fab because i, I uh, for very close up i need about plus one 1.25 um, as i get older and again the, the goggles work well for me so the killer question then is, are the goggles worth 550 pounds to go from your analog system to get the hd image well uh i'd say it's a definite yes <laughs> <laughs> i've uh right I've, okay i i i have realized that it's such a worthwhile investment i'm not someone that just spends and throws money at the hobby all the time i don't have a lot of money to spend you know on on, on the hobby itself on toys and um, yeah exactly you know we've got busy life we've got other things too um and i also like to make sure that every purchase i make is a worthwhile purchase as well uh and this is something that i won't regret well worth it for me I'm uh-huh. excited that you've got them because it now means that next time I come over, we can both fly in walk snail. Um, and I, I, know, I know one of the things that Adam and I do is uh, when there's enough people to, to be spotters, we will get a couple of planes up and we'll do kind of follow the leader. Um, and it's always been very easy for me flying in HD with either walk snail or DJI to follow Adam's plane. But flick it the other way around, Adam's always struggled with analog to kind of reacquire me in my little plane as I'm flying around. So uh, that's all, all been something we've talked about, so I'm excited about that. So what is it 
that made you make the move to warp snail over other systems? Because you have tried other stuff. You know, I have give you a go on the DJI stuff and and th those other things as well. What was it about warp snail that that made you go and buy you know VTX units and other bits in the kit? For me, I wanted a system that's going to last. So I'm always very wary of new systems coming into the market because if you're going to invest into that system, you want to make sure that in a year's time, two years' time, three years' time, it's still going to be a system you can buy into. And I really feel secure with this system now that they're constantly updating it. I mean, we've already brought out new BTX avatar modules already within the same year of launching it. Um so it seems like this is something that's going to stay now. And um, so I, I feel comfortable uh, committing a lot of money into this system, knowing that it's going to be around, hopefully, for the foreseeable future. It, it's an interesting point because I think that's what has held back a lot of pilots investing in either the HD Zero or something like the Walk Snail or even the new DJI system, is that you know how long is that going to be around for? So it's the reason that I am a fan of Walksdale. It's interesting that you uh, kind of have a similar view after it because, you know, you spend a lot of time in the forums and on YouTube and other places reading up about everything. You, I, you're the kind of guy that does his research. So it's interesting that that is the takeaway. In terms of the clarity and view, you've obviously been flying it more then since um, we've had yeah, the test. Yeah. Um, how Are you flying it in different types of day? How's it been? Yeah, so... Uh, I fly very similar to you. I like to cruise around. Uh, the image is actually very, very important for me. I probably didn't realise this before how much uh, the image is so important because it's. I, was, I, I never had this experience. And um, cruising around sunset, calm evenings, a beautiful picture. It's just. It's a different. It's a different world from the analog world that I was used to before. Um, I can. Now, even when I'm coming into land, it's so much easier because I can come in over the hedge and I can nicely scoot into the grass where before I didn't quite know where the hedge was and I didn't know how high I was above the grass. And um, yeah, it's just if if you haven't, you you wouldn't, you can't miss something you haven't had before. But now you've now you've experienced it. I think I really really would miss this now. It's it's um, yeah, yeah, it's been a well worth well worthwhile investment for me. Fab. And I think that's the important thing. I mean, you were lucky in that we're flying friends and I could bring my Wartsnell system and you could try it before you hit the button. And I think that is the issue for lots of pilots. You know, there isn't a place they can go and try the goggles out to make sure that it works for them. It doesn't give them headaches. They can focus on it easily and to, to experience what the HD image is like compared to analog. Have you flown much analog since you got the HD system working? Um, so very limited amounts, to be fair, because I'm, I'm really enjoying the system. Um, you know, it's. I think it's still got its place. Uh, you know, I think analog. Um, if I want a plane where I'm just going to be a bit, kind of a bit of freestyle, really, I'm just going to be blasting around the field, and I want to have my rebellious side come out for for ten minutes or so. That's fine for me. Um, but majority of the time, it is cruising around doing the odd like waypoint mission um and and this is just so much better for that it's good well it, it's interesting because i know one of the biggest things that i hear um is that when analog pilots go and invest in a hd system start flying it regularly uh when they go back and they then they fly analog after flying digital you know they, they take a, two goggles to the field two planes they do the hd one first and then they do the analog one they're always surprised at the difference and that is where the pilots tend to realize how much more clarity and picture they get with the hd system because yeah. i don't know if you found it but i know when i did i after three or four flights once the, the heart stopped pounding because it's a new system it's all you know you have that that feeling at the beginning once you've relaxed and it, you know it's going to work it's not going to crap out on you you're going to be able to get you know to the edge of your normal flying area and it's going to be fine and you relax and you just get used to being able to see the rows in the fields p 
perfectly. You know, the the houses in the distance individually, the, the leaves on the hedges as you come over the top to your approach. When you then go back and try and log, where you lose that level of detail, it's quite jarring. Um, so that it'll be interesting, you know, next time we're at the field, maybe I'll ask you that question. Uh, but yeah. I, I, know, I know for me, I, if I go to the field, I have to do my analog flying first, then use walks down or DJI because if I do it the other way around I kind of like oh. um, even with again the nice stuff are there any gotchas from the system that you found so far yeah so um, I connected it up to the UART as I normally would do um, and uh, obviously the UART is only providing 5 volts so the first time I powered the system up I'm like I'm not getting any power to the avatar um, and um and then with a bit of uh, help, <laughs> I managed to <laughs> realise my fault that I needed to, it needed more power than that. Um, so little things like that, really. Nothing that, obviously, the next time I set one up, I won't have that issue again. It was a very small um, problem. And probably if I'd actually done my research and done reading up the manual, as I, I should have done, I probably would have realised that straight away. Um, but other than that, it's been a very, very straightforward binding process um the installation is very tidy as well it's all very neatly uh the avatar unit's very small so i've managed to fit it in the plane no problems yeah i just found it you know I've, I've, i had a lot more issues when i was with analog than with this system the analog system you have like the noise which comes from the esc so it's it's, it's some aircraft are worse than others so it's kind of a you fly it and you see the lines then you put Pastor on it, and then you might put on an LC filter on it, and it's just something extra you have to include into an analog setup. Whereas with the digital, I've never, I've, I've not had that issue with the plane that I've been flying on. Um, yeah, it's just a very simple installation. You're running the the latest, greatest stuff, I, I think, because I think when we talked about it, we talked uh, with, with putting the air unit or the avatar unit into the model, we talked about the, doing the dating. You're on the latest version, the 32, 29, whatever it is, 10. Um, yeah. And I've had reports of people having range issues and things like that with it. Um, you're not having any of those, are you? No, it's absolutely fine. Um, I mean, I never ran really, really high power VTX, VTXs, um, uh, analog VTXs. This more than exceeds the distance that I was flying uh, with my analog setup. Um, I've not had any any problems. We fly in a nice big out, big open area, and I can reach all the usual places um, with this setup. So I'm I'm very happy with that. It's fine. Fantastic. Well, look, Alan, thanks again for the time. Um, I think that's that's probably a big as endorsement as you can get. You know, Adam until three weeks ago was an analog pilot, had a couple of flights with the system, but was able to try the goggles, which I think is a big part of it, and then realized what he was missing so adam thanks again uh, again links down below to all of the walk snail videos that are on the channel including if you're buying a walk snail system what you need to do uh, how you need to power it and things like how to do your updating and all that stuff is down there including things like your on-screen display fonts it is a very simple and easy system to set up and now you've got it buddy next time i come across uh, we're going to have a lot of fun in HD, so I'm looking forward okay. to that. So thanks again, Adam, and thank you for watching. And if you have any other questions, um, hopefully Adam and I will keep an eye on the comments now this video is live. If you, so if you have any more questions, do pop them down below, and we'll try and answer them as honestly and as openly as we can. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.